You want to make sure the engine's cool and we're going to take this cap off. You don't want to take this off when the engine's hot. On the driver's side at the base of the radiator, there is a drain. So make sure you have a drain bucket underneath and just twist nice and slow. And there we go. After it's drained out, you can close that valve. If you have a cover over the engine, you want to take that off. This vehicle doesn't have it. And then on the intake, there's this little uh, line that goes down to the valve cover. Just pop that off. Loosen up these worm clamps. Just use a straight blade screwdriver right there and next to the throttle body. Loosen that one up as well. Underneath here, just use a trim tool. Just pry this hose clamp away or hose retainer away. And slide the snorkel off. Right there. And there's a little grommet right here, so you just lift up on that so it comes off the pin and slide it out. It's just gonna come up like that. To give us a little more room, I'm gonna remove the air box, just disconnect the mass airflow sensor. Just push down on the connector. And on this vehicle, there's an extra hose that goes from the intake to the air box. If you have that hose, take that off. You can use, use some pliers or uh, some type of prying tool. Just pry it off. Set that aside and grab the air box and just slide it up and out. Now I'm gonna remove the upper radiator hose from the water pump side. Use some hose clamp pliers and move this hose clamp. And if you can lock the clamp together, uh, you can move it up a lot easier like this. And then take a pick or something that you can get underneath the hose just to break the seal. Just like that, just go all the way around. There we go, and slide it off. And remove the hose from the radiator shroud, the fan shroud. Slide it over there. Now we're gonna separate the fan shroud, the upper part. Take a push pin tool or a trim tool and just remove these push pins. One there. Should be one right there, but there isn't on this vehicle. And then two on the other side. And if you have a hose that's rooted through this bracket, take that hose off. This one's rooted down here. The 10 millimeter socket, take these two bolts out. And just grab the shroud and slide it out. Now we need to remove the fan and fan clutch. You can use a fan clutch tool like this. Just find the right wrench that fits. And with this tool, just use the air hammer and loosen it up. As I'm spinning it, I just don't want it to fall into the radiator. There we go. And slide it off. We're going to remove the belt. You can use a belt tensioner tool or a 15 millimeter wrench. Take the tension off the tensioner. And loosen up the belt and slide it off. Take the tensioner off. Use a 15 millimeter socket and there's three bolts. Take those out. Now we're going to take these hoses off. You have the two heater hoses and the thermostat hose. Use a hose clamp pliers. Move the hose clamp. And pull the hose off. If you have to, use a pick. You might want to have a drain bucket underneath in case any coolant comes out. And do the same on these two. Let's slide those off. 
And slide that one off as well. Now we need to remove the water pump bolts. There's three water pump bolts right here on this side and three on the other side. Use a 10 millimeter socket. When you get to the last one, you probably want to support the water pump in case it falls. And then just grab the water pump and just pry it outwards. Have another drain bucket underneath still. Slide it off. Disconnect the connector right here. Just push down on the tab and just slide it off. And there's three bolts you need to remove. This lower one, I'm just going to use a wrench so that I can get on there. Use a 10 millimeter wrench or socket. I didn't want to take the harmonic balancer off. You can do it without doing that. Because the bracket goes over this area right there, I'm just going to use a 10 millimeter socket. Take this bolt out. You could loosen it up just to get it out of the way a little bit. That should be good. And then just slide this out. And just take a rag and some brake parts cleaner. Just clean up this area. Don't get any uh, dust or debris inside there. Do the best you can. Make sure you get a new seal. And install that. And just line it up, just like it came off. There is a little cutout right there on that side. Now get all the bolts started. And once those are all tight, make sure you tighten down the bracket. You're going to struggle to get a torque wrench in here, but if you can, you can torque those bolts to 106 inch pounds, not foot pounds, inch pounds. Do the best you can. And plug the connector in. Make sure it locks down. And that's good. Now you want to take the old gaskets off. Just use a razor blade or a scraper. Just get behind here. You always want to replace these whenever you take the water pump off. And just clean up this area. Use a scraper or a razor blade. And do the same to the other side. If you're going to reuse the water pump, make sure you clean up the back side of the water pump. Use a razor blade or scraper. Scrape that up and then use some brake, clean, brake parts cleaner and a rag and just wipe it down. Take the new gaskets, line them up on the back side of the water pump. You can take two of the bolts, and the two bolts should hold the gasket on a little bit. And we'll do the same on the other side. Now gently bring the water pump over in position, trying not to drop the gaskets. And just get these, these two started. And these two. Once those are started, then you can take the other bolts. Now we're going to go around and torque all these bolts two different times. The first pass, we're going to do 11 foot-pounds. And the second pass, we'll do 22 foot-pounds. Now put the heater hoses on. And move the clamps. If the clamps don't look so good, you could put a new clamp on. Now take the lower radiator hose, slide that in position, and move the clamp.
And I'll put the tensioner on, just line it up. And there's three bolts. The shorter bolt goes at the base, and the longer bolts go right here and right here. And tighten those down. And take the serpentine belt, slide it over the crankshaft pulley, and go around the water pump pulley, down to the power steering pump pulley, and up to the alternator. We're going to go around the tensioner. And then we need to take the tension off the tensioner and then slide it under the idler pulley. So take your wrench or your belt tool and slide it underneath. Now take the fan and clutch and get that started. And you can take an adjustable wrench or a wrench that fits and do the best you can tightening this down. Just give the wrench a couple hits with a hammer. That's good. And take the upper radiator fan shroud. Line that up. There's a couple pins on the side that need to line up. Let me get the two bolts lined up. these down and take all the push pins and get those lined up put those back in on both sides now the upper radiator hose get that lined up push that in position right here and get this lined up on the water pump get the clamp in position and then you can release the clamp. Take a straight blade screwdriver or some type of tool that you can pry with. Just get in there and just pry it down. Make sure it locks in place in the right position. And that looks good. And reposition this hose right here. That's good. Now I take the air box. There's a couple pins on the bottom. Those have to line up with the bushings. There's one here. There should be one right there. This one doesn't have that. Slide it down. And lock it in position. Push it down. Reinstall the snorkel. Go over the throttle body first. And make sure that grommet's lined up up top. And then line up the airbox snorkel. Snug it down. And same on the other side. And push this retainer that goes from the hose back into the snorkel. Reconnect the mass airflow sensor connector. And reposition this hose. At this point, we can add the coolant. You want to make sure you check your owner's manual to add the correct coolant, a 50-50 mix. You can use a funnel and fill it up till the, you find the fill line on the reservoir. Then you want to run the vehicle for about 10 minutes. It's a good idea to have the heat about halfway on and continually checking to make sure the engine is not overheating and checking the level. After it's run about 10 minutes and you have heat, you can shut the vehicle down adjust the level, let the engine cool down, and put the cap back on. Road test the vehicle and double check after you're done.